All right, another popular request coming your way in this video, guys. We're going to discuss uh, a few very basic but very opportunistic ways that you can use candlesticks uh, as a part of your everyday trading. We're not going to get overly complicated here. Just give you a couple of ideas, very basic, simple ways that you can use what you're seeing on the chart, what you're seeing in the form of the candlesticks that can maybe help you get you a little bit of a hint as to what might come next. Yeah, and at the very start of this, of course, I'm going to do a brief explanation of uh, just what a candlestick is for everybody and why you're going to be looking for some of these things. So, you know, your typical candlestick, I just happen to have NVIDIA up, and uh, oh, we'll pick this massive green one, uh, this green bar here. So what you have is the body of the candle on your left side, because we, we read things from left to right. So uh, on your left side, uh, because it's green, I know that it opened... Uh, and then closed at a higher price. That means it was up on the day. So therefore, the left body, that is uh, the open price, and then uh, the right here is going to be the close. The bottom, of, the bottom of the wick, that is the low of the day, and this is the high of the day. So open and close, embodied by the candle, and then a red candle will be the reverse. I know that the, the top of that candle uh, is on the left, where it would have opened on that session, and then it would have closed at the bottom. So you get that out of the way, and I want to explain something. Like, whether you call it... Uh, you know, like, and I don't have a, per a perfect example of a doji, but uh, we can look at this one here, right? When you, when you talk about these tiny bodies and a long wick, and that's what I want to get into. Now, a, a better example of it might be right here. It's not that tight, um, but you have a very, very tight body relative to the long wick in a bit of a downward trend. And that typically signals, signals a bit of a reversal. I want to tell you why that is the case, right? So you have a stock which is pulling back. You had a high at 350. You then had a lower high at 330. You can see it grinding down. And then it actually breaks 300 NVIDIA on this particular day. So what this long wick is telling you is that you had trade action of huge volatility through that 300 price all the way down 20 points but that despite how far it went down and traveled so far so fast, it en ended up closing well above the lows. Like not a little bit above the lows, well above the lows. And in an actual doji, like you'll have it even tighter than this in a lot of cases where the body is even smaller. And that simply tells you that you had a massive rejection of the price area below the bottom of that candle. Yes, it traded down. They're likely in panic, and a lot of times that'll happen. This is a daily chart at the open. And then you had a rejection of those levels as the price immediately and quickly recovered to close above. And that tends to be bullish, whether in the form of gapping up the next day uh, or whether in the form of continuing a move to the upside. Now, the thing about that is it is not always true that it's going to hold a trend. Understand something. And this is why I actually picked NVIDIA because, you know, NVIDIA, I just, in our trade of the day, showed you why a long was going to be a losing trade. Understand that fundamentals are, and, and market events are going to blow everything out of the water, right? So when you have an overall market sentiment, uh, which is waiting on something like the Fed, uh, and then you have signals of uh, the taper coming through and then possible raising of rates, high valuation names are going to get blown out of the water. And sometimes chart patterns aren't going to matter so much in the aftermath of that. Now, obviously, looking at that pattern the next day, if you were to pick it up in the pre-market, you had an opportunity for a long, but it didn't hold up because overall market circumstances were against you. But understand first what the candle is telling you and then try to understand why that pattern of the really, really tight tight body and the long wick, and it works in both directions, what is that really saying? It's saying that there was a harsh rejection of the majority of that price movement, and then the volume wanted to come back in, accept it at a higher level, meaning there were no sellers down at those prices. They just did not want to sustain the selling down there, and that can be a signal of a reversal. So understand those basics first, and then other patterns make more sense. When it comes to candlesticks, I noticed that there, you know, especially candlestick, I guess, education, People have terms for certain two bar patterns, three bar patterns, whatever the case is. I, I chose Docu to kind of explain this a little bit here. I don't know what the terms are, right? But at the same time, I also don't care what the terms are because I want to look at what the candles are telling me. Neil mentioned, you know, uh, depending on the color of the candle, they're color coded. So obviously, if it's red, it opened higher, closed lower, and then the wicks would tell you how far the extreme points are. But what I want to know is where's the volume? That's what I want to see. So I, I kind of pair the tails and the bodies depending on how they cluster together. So on DocuSign here earlier, you notice that initially on this move here off the open, we went as high as what, 146 and then fell back and closed that five minute bar. This is the five minute chart, by the way, uh, at 145. Okay, that's good to know that they're rejecting 146. 
we went down, went back up, and then there's another move that went through 146 and brought it back down to 145. Now, I, I believe, I don't know if uh, it's called a cloud cover or something, but anyways, regardless of what it's called, now I know just based on the way it's moving around 146 that there's a lot of action on the sell side. Although they're trying to buy, there's a lot of action on the sell side. More attempts at going up through 146 are being essentially brought back down. As soon as you bring it down through 146, now if I wasn't looking at DocuSign at this point, but as soon as they take it through 144.50, which would kind of get you through this bottom, that would confirm all the selling you saw up top. Now what do you do? Okay, I know there's some selling here. Where do I put my stops? How do I look at this? Let's zoom this out. And a lot of the times when, I, you know, when I'm on the show, I kind of just do this where I'm like, oh, I want to see what the structure looks like. Well, the reason I want to structure this is, what does this look like? They're selling at a location where there's already been previous selling on Friday. So this would give you more confidence in like, oh, you know what? There's a decent amount of sell activity around the 146. Now I know by looking further back that there's actually a ton of action around that 146.50, 147 mark. So maybe shorts are good at this price point. Now, had I looked at it, that would have been a nice little short. I didn't, so I went for the short here at 142. So this is the way I like to use candlesticks, regardless of what these patterns are called. It really doesn't matter because you just need to understand the structure or the volume structure. Because at the end of the day, everyone just looks at candlesticks to help determine where's support, where's resistance, what is the rotation, uh, is there going to be more selling or buying. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they're called. Just figure out where the selling's taking place, where the action is taking place. And then when you have a good understanding of where it is, you can start to notice that, you know what, they're really trying to get past this level, but they're not getting there. Then you start working, maybe apply some of those uh, names that are attached to these candles, and then you go for the trade. But what matters more than names of setups is the actual structure of the candles and how they are in relative to the rest of the volume that's been at certain prices. In this case, it was around that 146.50 into that 147 level for Friday's volume. So whether you're looking for something along the lines of an entry point or whether you're just maybe trying to identify when a trend has come to an end, not necessarily even a trend reversal, but just the end of the current move, understanding exactly what is constructing each candle and what that data is telling you is a great way, guys, to get very, very clear hints when you're in a trade. It's that simple. Thanks.